Good morning. <clears throat> Welcome to worship at Pilgrim Lutheran Church and School. We are so excited to celebrate Ascension. It's a holy and powerful day that sometimes gets overlooked, yet is exactly what we need for this very moment in our lives as individuals, as a community, and as a world. God is showing up in many different ways. Amen? Amen. And so we're excited to celebrate that together. Also, welcome to everyone who's worshiping with us on YouTube or Facebook. And uh, everyone, please uh, make sure you let us know how we can support you and be in prayer for you. If there's a connection card in your bulletin, you can write down prayer requests or you can put them into the chat of YouTube or Facebook so we can know how to pray with you and support you. And uh, we're very, very thankful uh, to be celebrating today uh, the way our unlimited God keeps showing up in amazing and life-changing ways. So uh, we have some new music that we're going to be singing today, or newer, I should say. Uh, so I'm going to invite our Minister of Music, Michael Knuth, to help us learn the uh, hymn of the day. Uh, no need to stand. You can remain seated. But he's going to walk us through, I think, one of the verses, correct? Correct. So the, the words are on page 9, before the throne of God above. So here is the tune for the first verse. Thank you. 
Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God of glory, your Son, Jesus Christ, suffered for us and ascended to your right hand. Unite us with Christ and each other in suffering and in joy, that all the world may be drawn into your bountiful presence. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Come on out. Oh, look at this. Oh, my goodness. That's cool. All right. Anybody else want to come up? Don't be scared. We are so thankful to have you guys in worship. You can remain standing. Uh, you guys know a pastor that loves to sing. Do you guys like to sing? Well, you can, can you that. pretend to like to sing for a couple moments? That'd be yes. great. All right. So we just sang a song that has actions to it. So I want to teach you guys the actions. It tells a story, a little bit of the story of Jesus' life. So it goes, you came from heaven. I'm going to go like this. Heaven. Heaven. To earth, <coughs> to show the way. Okay, let's do that again. You can do it with me too if you want. You came from heaven to earth to show the way. From the earth to the cross. From the earth to the cross, my debt to pay. Debt means you owe something, you have to pay something. But with uh, Jesus, we don't have to pay anything, it's free. So from the cross to the grave, from the grave. To the sky, Lord, we lift your name on high. Well, that's a lot, but I'm just helping you start to get it. So well, next time we sing it, you guys can help me with the action. So it goes like this. You came from heaven to earth to show the way. Now we go back to the earth. From the earth, the cross, to the cross. My debt to pay. My debt to pay. And then from the cross, from the cross to the grave. And then from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. Now we're going to sing it uh, all together. One, two, three. See, Messiah's already singing. That's perfect. That's great. All right, it goes. 
You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross, my debt to pay from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. Amen. Uh, let us pray, God. We thank you so much for this story, for making us part of this story as we come to worship with your people, and for not putting a limit on what you can do, even when things are hard and uncertain. You have a mighty call for us, and you show up in many and multitude of ways. So one of the ways you showed up this morning, God, is through these children. Bless them. Help us to be a good community for them, to grow up strong in faith, love, and hope. And bless Pastor Anakari and the team uh, to have a wonderful time in Sunday school and to return rejoicing. In your holy name we pray. Amen. 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 All right. All right. You're now invited to right. go learn or stay in worship. That's great. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. We'll continue with the reading of our first lesson. Our first reading comes from the book of Acts, the first chapter. Luke writes in the first book, Theopolis, I write about all that Jesus did and taught from the beginning until the day when he was taken up to heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witness in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus who has been taken up from you into heaven will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. This is the word of the Lord. We read responsibly, Psalm 47. Clap your hands, all you peoples. Shout to God with a joyful sound. For the Lord Most High is to be feared, a great king over all the earth. Who subdues the peoples under us and the nations under our feet. God has gone up with a shout. The Lord with the sound of the ram's horn. Sing praises to God. Sing praises. Sing praises to our King. Sing praises. For God is King of all the earth. Sing praises with a song. God reigns over the nations. God is the Lord of God high. The nobles of the peoples have gathered as the people of God of Abraham. The rulers of the earth belong to God who is highly exalted. This is the word of the Lord.
El Santo Evangelio viene del capítulo 24 de San Lucas. Gloria a ti, oh Señor. Jesús les dijo, está escrito que el Mesías tenía que morir y resucitar al tercer día y que en su nombre se anunciara a todas las naciones que se vuelven a Dios para que Él les perdone sus pecados. Comenzando de Jerusalén, Ustedes deben dar testimonio de estas cosas. Y yo enviaré sobre ustedes lo que mi Padre prometió. Pero ustedes, quédense aquí, en la ciudad de Jerusalén, hasta que reciban el poder que viene del cielo. The Holy Gospel comes from St. Luke, the 24th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the eleven, and those with them. These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning in Jerusalem. You are witnesses to these things. And see, I am sending upon you what my Father promised, so stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Then he led them as far out as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. And while he was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried up to heaven. And they worshipped him. Returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they were continually in the temple blessing God. This is the gospel of our Lord. You may be seated. Thank you. Thank you for being here on perhaps the most underrated celebration in the church year, the Feast of the Ascension. Why is it underrated? Well, sometimes we just forget about it. It takes place on a Thursday. And we didn't come together on a Thursday, so we thought, let's do it on a Sunday. Second of all, you know, we like changing the colors up here. Uh, and we didn't change the colors. We're still in white, which is Easter. And, uh, you know, there's no special traditions really around Ascension, at least in North America. I mean, you don't ever have someone come up to you and say, hey, what you doing for Ascension? What are you giving up for Ascension? What are you taking on for Ascension? So what are you getting someone for Ascension? It's just not a thing, right? But... As we find ourselves in a world that is constantly trying to figure out new ways to stress us out, have you noticed that? The world's just trying to get us, and sometimes does. It's been a stressful time. Ascension is exactly what we need. It is the perfect thing to be celebrating this morning, especially when circumstances are challenging when our situation is uncertain, when things don't seem quite coalesced, we need ascension. And, oh yeah, and this is a, a great joke I saw. The ascension means uh, the day that Jesus started working from home, right? Isn't that good? Uh, I like that a lot. Um, and uh, so Jesus has gone home, but where is God 
in the midst of all this? Well, Ascension reminds us that God does show up in many different ways. God shows up and we're not in charge of how and when God makes appearances because God is God and we are not. And just a note about Luke 24, which represent the very last verses of the Gospel of Luke and, of course, comparing that to Acts chapter 1. By the way, did you notice how similar Luke 24 and Acts 1 are? It's almost like they were written by the same person. And, of course, they were. Acts is the Gospel of Luke part 2. And just like a lot of us appreciate Luke, uh, and we appreciate Luke because of the things he captures about Jesus that I think tend to ground us in who we are and also free us to do what we're meant to do as a people, as a community. And there's a pretty dramatic, and I might even say possibly traumatic moment that are lifted up in both of these chapters. I mean, just imagine, after a life changing three-year journey with your leader, your rabbi, your friend, eating together, traveling together. He is ripped away from you, betrayed, arrested, tortured, and killed. And then he rises from the dead and he comes back to you. All the joy to have Jesus back. And so then you turn to Jesus and say, Jesus, you're back for good, right? And he's like, well, about that. <laughs> he stays with them, but he, physically speaking, they see him float up to heaven, Elijah style. And they are left wondering the questions that we often wonder some kind of primal faith questions. Where is God really? What do we do when God seems distant or we can't see God? We're getting good practice, right? Because we have an ascension window in front of this church and we can't see it because we have plastic. And uh, please ask Mr. Knuth, our musician, at the end of the service. He has a wonderful alternate reading of the first lesson that incorporates this whole scene. So uh, it's really, really hilarious, actually. Um, but um, what are we supposed to do when we can't see God, where we don't know where God is exactly? Or, you know, when we hear Jesus say, wait, waiting on God? That's, that's a hard one. But that's the instruction that Jesus gives the disciples in the midst of his imminent departure. He says, Slide 24, uh, stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. I mean, just to point out, even though Jesus has risen from the dead, it's still very dangerous for the disciples to be out and about in a place like Jerusalem. Okay, scratch that. Because Jesus has risen from the dead, it's even more dangerous now, to be a follower of Jesus, because instead of a movement dying with a public execution of the leader, there's still this rumbling. There's still this energy. There's even this rumor that Jesus is not dead, but alive. And this movement could uh, pose even greater threat to the religious authorities and to Rome itself. So for Jesus to tell the disciples to stay in Jerusalem, where things are hot, where things are dangerous, where they're maybe most in danger of being arrested and tortured themselves, that was quite an ask that Jesus was making on the disciples. He urges them to stay together, and not just stay together, but to wait for the Holy Spirit. Is there anything that strikes us as less efficient than waiting. I mean, isn't the old prayer, Lord, give me patience and give it to me right now, right? And it just doesn't seem to make sense to us sometime. But not only is patience 
a virtue in the general human sense. The gift of patience and holy waiting is part of our faith. It's a central part of being a community. Sometimes we have to wait. And there's this great quote I heard from Robert Wall uh, that can give meaning to this from a faith perspective. Waiting for God to act is a community project. I've never heard it described that way before. Waiting with others is an act of solidarity with friends. The apostles do not scatter and go their separate ways to await a private spirit-filling experience of divine faithfulness. They were joined together. They stuck with it together in a specific place at a specific time to await God's action on them all. Powerful, right? Very powerful promise along with the two promises that follow, after Jesus says, wait in the city, he gives them two powerful promises. Number one, you will receive power through the Holy Spirit. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, you will receive power through the Holy Spirit. And neighbor, you will be my witnesses. Recibirás poder por medio del Espíritu Santo y serás a mi testigo, serán mis testigos. These promises are Jesus' response to the question, Lord, is now this the time that you restore the kingdom to Israel? And once again, Jesus says, well, about that. I'm not actually going to tell you exactly how this is going to go, but I'm going to tell you what is happening. I love Israel, but this isn't about Israel. This is about redeeming the entire world. The mission of the kingdom of God has now expanded. And just to climb into the minds of the disciples, I, f I found this in a, in a study I was doing on this, and it just so perfectly sums up what the disciples would have heard when Jesus gives this command to be witnesses, this is what it felt like to them. Number one, stay here. Next slide. Stay here in the big city you're visiting. In other words, Jerusalem. Number two, then go from this city out to Judea, the outskirts of Jerusalem, where they basically hung out all the time. So that's where they felt comfortable. Number three, then I'm calling you to Samaria. Those are the people you despise. The unclean people. Remember the Samaritans? the people you weren't supposed to associate with at all or had seen as half-breeds or traitors. And number four, go to those people you don't even know. Go to the ends of the earth with this message of love and forgiveness and hope and new life. It's safe to say that the communities of the disciples, as they were going through probably some degree of whiplash, right, from the life, death, resurrection, and now ascension, they're dealing with a great amount of stress and uncertainty, and yet Jesus gives them a call, a huge expanded call on their life from a God that can't be predicted, controlled, measured, or modified. The ascension is a gift to us that we have a God that is unlimited and on the move and able to do something great in the midst of challenge and uncertainty. And as they stood up there looking at the sky with Jesus in the flesh gone, but with the words of Jesus ringing in their ears, you will receive power from on high and you will be my witnesses. All they had were the words of these two promises, together with the command to stay in the city. But stay in the city they did, and those two promises were enough. More than enough. Because we know from the narrative that continues in the book of Acts, written by Luke, and by the history of the early church, these promises came true in them, in real time. And it was exactly what they needed. Power from the Holy Spirit, an identity to be witnesses for a hurting world. And sometimes a hurting world includes our hurts 
that find healing. So I want to close with a story about a man that Wayne and Donna and Anakari and I met in Ibeline, Palestine. His name is Elias Shakur. And he is a Palestinian Christian priest from the Melkite Greek Catholic tradition. He's been nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize three times. He is a champion for human rights and for the Christian faith. He has built a school of over 3,000 students that serves the whole community. It's a Christian school. Over 70% of their students are Muslim. It doesn't matter. They serve the community, whoever is there. And here's a photo next of when uh, Anakai and I and our friend Jamie got to meet uh, Archbishop Shakur. And uh, there is a story that illuminates this power that we all receive to be empowered by the Holy Spirit and to be witnesses to the ends of the earth. He wanted a gym for his school. Does that sound familiar, Pilgrim? They wanted a gym. And he kept applying for a permit to the Israeli government multiple times, multiple years, rejected, rejected, rejected. And so finally he's like, I got to do something different. I got to fly to Washington, D.C. So he flies to Washington, D.C., 1989, knocks on the home front door of Secretary of State James Baker. Susan Baker, his wife, answers the door and says, who are you? He says, my name is Elias Shakur. I'm a priest from Palestine. She's like, do you have an appointment? Are you ready for this one? I am a man from Galilee. We do not make appointments. We make appearances. She decides to be nice, lets him into the kitchen, gives him some iced tea, but after 10 minutes says, uh, I, 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 Father Shakur, I'm so sorry, but you have to go. I have 20 women coming for a Bible study, and I just don't have time to host you. He said, oh, really? What is the Bible study about? She said, the Beatitudes. He says, okay, I will go, but I feel so sorry for you. She's like, what? You feel sorry for me? He said, yes. She said, why? He said, because you have a man from Galilee who knows the land, knows the language Jesus was speaking, Aramaic, and has studied the Beatitudes for years. And with you pushing me out the door, you will never truly understand this scripture. <laughs> so two hours later, he has spent time teaching the Beatitudes to a group of 20 women, mostly wives of high-powered Republicans in Washington, D.C. And to make a long story short, a year and a half later, it took some time, but Secretary of State James Baker in Tel Aviv secured a permit for a gym in rural Galilee. Someone say amen. amen. And he got to build the gym because of the way the Spirit moved through him. And so it's just a story that reminds us that we cannot put a limit on what God can do, even in the midst of challenge and uncertainty. No matter what our circumstance, God shows up in a multitude of ways, and Christ is definitely still speaking possibility into our lives. Amen. that we rehearsed earlier. I don't believe the screen has all the words, unfortunately. There was an error made. So please uh, look at the bulletin and maybe just skip ahead past the hymn so we don't get confused on the screen. Uh, please stand and let us sing together.
united in hope and joy of the resurrection, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Risen and restoring God, we praise you for choosing us to be your witnesses here on earth. Let us neither become entranced, staring up into the heavens, nor distraught by the suffering of the world. Empower us to live out our baptism by the power of your spirit. Hear us, O oh God. God of the cosmos, you cradle creation in your loving arms and anoint it with, psalm, uh, with signs of your presence. In the budding of flowers, the birth of a baby, and the formations of the land and sky, reveal your abundant life. Hear us, O oh God. God of compassion, provide clarity and direction for those experiencing life transitions in births and deaths, new employment and new relationships, divorces and departures. We pray for those receiving new diagnosis or undergoing treatment for illness or injury, especially Julie, Bilo, Glenda and Eve, Helen Wallace Barrett, Ann Barsano, Valerie Carlson, Jeremy Chapman, Joey Coco, Joan Crabtree, Linda Dubai, Rosanna Heverin, Pat Kuzman, Julie Lee, Jim Liberto, Linda Nelson, Millie Ostrander, Harold Feist, Marie Schiffo, Mark Strandberg, Katie Sullivan, and all those we name before you now, aloud or in silence, in our hearts. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. God of welcome, you call us to feast at your eternal banquet. We pray for all those who mourn, and we give thanks for those who came before us, especially Jack Boris, Marie Doman, Barbara Gardner, Charlie Midzleff, Lynn Spohr, the leader. Hear us, O God. Abounding in your promise to be with us and to clothe us from on high with a Holy Spirit love and presence that will not let us go. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Amen. Let's share the peace one to another. God of good gifts, receive these and all our offerings as we present them in faithful service for the sake of your gospel. Prepare our hearts to receive you in this meal as you pour out your very presence through Jesus Christ, the wellspring of eternal life. Amen.
be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. Indeed, right and salutary to which in all times and all places, but especially right here and right now, give thanks for the many ways God is showing up. Even in the midst of uncertainty, there are promises, eternal promises that come to life right before our eyes. Even in this holy meal in which God is making us new, reconciling us one to another and giving our lives a brand new start with the unlimited power and peace that only Jesus can bring. And so with the church on earth, with the hosts of heaven, with the saints of every time and of every place, we praise your name, O God, and join their unending hymn. So we remember, in the night in which our Lord Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread, he gave thanks, he broke it, and gave it for all to eat, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. De igual manera, después de haber cenado, el Señor tomó la copa. Dio gracias, y lo dio a todos sus, sus discípulos, diciendo, Tomen y beben. Esto es el nuevo pacto en mi sangre, derramado por ustedes y por todo el mundo para el perdón de los pecados. Hagan esto en memoria mía. We now pray together the prayer our Lord Jesus teaches us to pray each in our own way, and language. Our Father in heaven, our Lord in heaven, your kingdom come, your will be done, on the earth as it is in heaven. You may be seated. Uh, we will proceed with communion, and we have real bread, which you can partake of directly, and partake of the cups directly. The light colored is grape juice, the darker colored is wine. If for whatever reason you're not ready to receive, uh, please come forward with your arms crossed, and you'll receive a blessing. We also have gluten-free bread available by request. Uh, please come forward as the ushers direct you. Remember that this is not a Lutheran table or pilgrim's table. It is a Lord's table. It's a Lord who presents uh, God's self to us to be able to experience this meal. Please come forward as the ushers direct you.
body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you growing in God's grace. Amen. Amen. Just a few announcements. Uh, we are ending, as of right now, our school year worship schedule. So uh, throughout the next few months, we will be worshiping at 9.30 uh, a.m., just one service. And next week is not only Memorial Day weekend, but we will also be celebrating Pentecost. We enter the biggest uh, season of the year. You're invited to wear red if you would like, but just come to church uh, no matter what you're wearing. And we are thankful to be celebrating our life uh, together in many ways coming up, including uh, pilgrim graduation, uh, both Bible studies continuing, our prayer groups, hot meals. So please, if you don't get our weekly newsletter, uh, let us know, uh, and we will make sure you get that. Also, just a word about the progress. We will uh, be continuing with construction, thanks to a generous donation by AAA One Masonry. Six Masons did a ton of work to seal up the brick work and some of the gaps that were behind the stone from this side and they donated it completely. Robert and AAA One donated the work that happened on Saturday, all the materials, all the work, and we've got praise for that. Uh, so that is really helping us cross the finish line, and uh, we're thankful for everyone's generosity and patience in regards uh, to this effort. Are there any other announcements? All right, uh, let us then arise and sing our sending hymn. 